Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we are talking about derivatives. We are going to go over what a derivative is. I'll show you how to solve it the traditional way and then the easy way, and then we'll have some practice finding some derivatives. First off, let's talk just on a very broad term, what is a derivative? A derivative is the slope of a tangent line. And a tangent line looks like this. It's a line that touches a curve at one point and is perpendicular to the curve at that point. So this tangent line, the green one here, you would say it has a positive slope. So that would be the slope of that line. You could also have a tangent line over here that has a negative slope. You could have a tangent line right here along the x-axis that has a zero slope. And you could have a tangent line like that yellow one. It should probably be shifted over a little bit but it would just touch the curve at one point and this one would have a more steep or higher number positive slope. When we think about the slopes of these four tangents, basically it, you could graph them like this. The orange one is a negative and then the red one is zero and then the green one's um, a little bit positive, the yellow one's really positive, and it would be a line. So what you can do is predict the slope of every single point along this curve, and that's called the derivative. So a derivative is going to be a function. In this case, it's a line, and that's basically what we're calculating. Here, this derivative will tell you what is the slope at any point along this function, the slope of the tangent. All right, now let's talk about actually solving it. This is the formula for solving a, um, a derivative. You see it over there, the function or the derivative, which is often written as the f prime of x, is the limit as h approaches 0 of that whole function. Now, this is complicated, and the reason I'm showing it to you is because I'm going to show you a shortcut next that's a whole lot less work. But just so that you know, it would look something like this. When you solve it, you would substitute in the function and then you would use some algebra to expand our binomial, simplify, get rid of common terms, and uh, simplify out an h down to this point. Then you'd have to remember that what we're looking at is the limit as h approaches 0. So we would substitute 0 into there after we get it out of the denominator. And then that leaves us with the answer of 4x. Super complicated. And Remember, this function is 2x squared minus 6. What happens when we get functions that are more complicated, like this one, this trinomial, or this one that has four terms, or this one that has negatives and fractions in your exponents? What we're going to do next is go through the shortcut way, using the power rules, to actually solve for the derivative of a function. Let's take a look. This is the power rule for derivatives. That d over dx just means you're finding the derivative of a term x to the power of n. So let's look at our function that we just did, um, 2x squared minus 6. We're going to find the derivative of each of those terms and put them all together for our final answer. n, which is our exponent, times x. In other words, we take our exponent and we multiply it times the coefficient of x. If there is no coefficient of x, you just put it in front. Then we take that exponent and we reduce it by 1. So that would look like whoops, um, 4x to the power of 1. On our second term, 6, we don't have an exponent there, or, a, or sorry, a variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a variable, x to the power of 0. And x to the power of 0 means 1. So it's like, oh, 6 times 1 is 6. So we're not changing the value of that. We're just giving it an exponent and a, um, a variable so that I can show you why what's going to happen next will happen. We would multiply 0 times 6, and that gives us 0. So we would end up with 4x here and 0 there. From now on, I am not going to add that x to the power of 0. 
just remember that the, the derivative of any number is just zero. From now on, when we solve for derivatives, we're not going to put that x to the power of zero and then multiply zero times six and then say zero minus one is negative one, but zero times x to the power of negative one is still zero. All of that we're just gonna skip. Just remember this, that if you have the derivative of any number, just a, just a number by itself with no variable, it becomes zero. So our final answer for this is that the derivative of that function is 4x. Notice that matches exactly what we did last time. In three steps instead of like 15 or whatever those were, and the steps are much less complicated. Now we're going to practice using this rule and also keeping in mind that numbers just become zero as we look at all of those functions that I listed previously. Let's look at this trinomial. This is how it would work. I'm going to take the exponent and multiply it times my coefficient, 3 times 8, and then I'm going to reduce my exponent by 1. So I'll end up with 24x to the power of 2. I'll move on to my second term, 2 times 5, and then I reduce my exponent by 1. So I have 2 times 5 is 10 times x. And I don't write x to the power of 1 because I realize x to the power of 1 is x. And then with my 7 on there, I remember the derivative of any number is 0, so I could write plus 0 to add an extra step, but I'm just not going to. Instead, that's my final answer. There is my derivative for this trinomial. Way less complicated than that original formula. It's going to save a lot of time to use the power rule. It's a lot easier. I do have a practice question for you now. This is the one I'd like you to try out. Pause and practice. You'll be able to go through this probably in about a minute. Go. Hey, welcome back. Here we go. We're going to find the derivative. Multiply 4 times 3. That gives us 12x to the power of 3. Then we do um, 3 times 8, which is 24. We keep our sign, so it would be negative 24x to the power of 2. Then in our third term, we multiply 2 times 5 and reduce our exponent by 1, giving us negative 10x. The 7 is a number, so we're not even going to worry about it. Derivative of any number is 0, and boom, that's our final answer. That's the easy way to do it. I am going to put up a challenge question, the one that I had listed earlier with a negative exponent and a fraction exponent. This is not the most complicated function we could have. Okay, just putting that out there, it's definitely not the most um, complicated function. But I want to go over those two examples just to show you that this rule works even with this one. So you could, if you're up for a challenge, pause and try this one out on your own. Here we go. Let's follow the same exact rules to find the derivative. 6 times 7 is 42. 6 minus 1 is 5. Boom. 42x to the power of 5. Now, this one's a little more complicated. We do have to multiply 4 thirds times 9. Fortunately, that gives us a nice number, but we also have to simp um, reduce our 4 thirds by 1. So I'm saving you a step here by subtracting 3 over 3, which is equal to 1. And going back to our you know, middle school math, I'm <laughs> subtracting fractions. We do have to have a common denominator. So when we do that, we end up with negative 12x to the power of one third. And this one here is very interesting because I have a negative exponent times a negative coefficient. So negative two times negative three gives me positive six. And then I reduce negative 2 by 1. So I have to remember all kinds of rules here. Multiplying integers, negative 2 times negative 3 gives me positive 6. Subtracting integers, negative 2 minus 1 gives me negative 3. So it actually becomes a bigger negative, right? All of that comes into play here. We also have to remember that 11 is a number. So the derivative of any number is 0. Therefore, we leave that, get rid of it on the end, and that's our final derivative there. Quick recap. The derivative is the slope of any tangent. We use the shortcut to try and find the derivative, and practice makes progress. Go to it. Have fun. I hope that video was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.